So now the death of Nelson Mandela shines a sharp focus on what in parts is still a bitterly divided society. Many black communities remain desperately poor, while much of the country's wealth and land is still in the hands of a small minority of white Afrikaners, in particular farmers. And that division has fueled violence with around 3,500 farm murders since the year Mandela became president. That was 1994. His legacy of reconciliation and forgiveness afforded white farmers a measure of protection. But many Afrikaners in particular now feel increasingly threatened, as our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller now reports. For some, the tables have truly turned since the death of apartheid. Comeuppance, perhaps, and yet cruel as life's been for poor whites, rich whites still run the economy, own the big houses, and have the best jobs. Out in the vastness of the South African veldt, huge white-owned farms employ millions of black workers. But white farmers have by far the most dangerous job in this country. And the next thing they've tied my hands with is the cable ties. Letty Nell is an 86-year-old widow who lives alone on the 1,800-hectare family farm she still manages with a few hard hands. Early on the 12th of November, armed intruders burst through the gate as she powered off her eight-foot-high perimeter fence. They threw me down on the ground. And they tried to pull my pants down and they started screaming. And the, the next thing, they took out the knife and put it next to my throat. And the one, when I screamed, the one hit me in the face and they hit me with a revolver on my head. They told me they're going to kill me. This is Letty later that day. Amazingly, she'd escaped and had hid in the hay in the cowshed. This was the second time her clip drift farm has been attacked. Across South Africa, more than 10 farms are attacked every week. Afrikaner farmers are being killed at four times the national murder rate, 3,500 in the two decades since Nelson Mandela became president. Now he's dead, many fear a Boer bloodbath. Do you feel less safe now that Nelson Mandela is dead? Definitely. Why? Can you explain why? Because he had a control over the, over the whole country. Everybody respected him, you see. And now he's not there. He can't control the people anymore. The Afrikaners today feel as unloved and vulnerable as their Voortrekker ancestors must have done in the mid-19th century. At the vast monument to the Voortrekker heroes, built with black labour by the apartheid regime, I met a man who believes farm attacks are an orchestrated, racially motivated attempt to drive whites from the land. Like many, he uses terms like genocide and extinction. As they saying that they're going to be a, a genocide of the white people. Uh, who I, says that though? Uh, there's a lot of gossip, as I say. It is on Facebook, it is on uh, a talk among people. Uh, but there's no, there's no evidence for this no, at all. No evidence of that at all. That's why we believe it won't going to happen. But you, but you believe it sufficiently to set up the National Front Party to protect okay. the interests of Afrikaners who you see as under threat. Okay. We say the, the National Front Party, we perceived it to get self-determination, not because of the murders, not because of um, as we want to rule ourselves and we want to create for our people a future. In Another a, Boer Republic. You can call it that. But the perceptions of Afrikaner conservatives are not borne out by the facts. Independent studies have concluded that 90% of attacks on white farms are just robberies. Isolated farmsteads are soft targets and offer rich pickings for thieves. And because the vast majority of South Africa's 32,000 commercial farmers are white, of course they're the victims. But when you delve deeper, it turns out that most of the victims of violence and rape on these farms are actually the black farm workers themselves. Only a tiny, tiny handful of the attacks on these farms are deemed to have any racial motivation at all. But perceptions are powerful and are stoked by incendiary rhetoric, like when this populist politician was filmed singing the old liberation song, Shoot the Boar. It's now been banned by the courts here as hate speech. 
But resentment of rich whites runs deep among those who believe they're entitled to reclaim what was stolen from them in the first place. Genocide and violence against the black people created by white people. South Africa is created on blood, mass murder, is, whether it's on farm or is it on disposition of people or in the mines. You gotta have to go back to the original program, land redistribution, nationalization of the mineral resources, democratization of the economy. You have to take from white people to distribute to the black majority. I have two words for you, Andele. Robert Mugabe. Absolutely. Robert Mugabe is a great example of what you must do with some lessons, of course. With South Africa's great reconciliator, Nelson Mandela, now gone, there are those who say the honeymoon's over for South Africa's two and a half million Afrikaners. Today, racial fault lines lie exposed again. But the spectre of a Mugabe-style future is actually the stuff of both black and white nightmares. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, South Africa.